G'day everyone, thought I'd do a quick video today on how to identify between topaz and quartz. Now when your topaz or quartz is still crystalline and you're finding it close to the source, it's quite easy to identify between the two. Uh, topaz comes in the orthohombric system, so it, you know, while the shapes vary and stuff, it'll always adhere to that system, where of course your quartz comes in the trigonal system. Um, the difference between the two is very easy to spot. So once you get your eye in, identifying between crystalline topaz and quartz is quite easy. Now you also have other th other things to help you out too, of course. You have your cleavage. Now topaz has perfect basal cleavage. Now this one shows it beautifully how you've got that perfect flat base where it's cracked straight across the base of the crystal. So, and you can see that if you look at just about all these crystals, you can see the perfect basal cleavage. Even on this one here, it steps down, but you've still got those flat, that flat basal cleavage. Whereas with your quartz, you get the conchordial fracture. Now this bit of smoky shows it really well. It basically means a shell-like fracture, and you can see there how it's how it's uneven and it's cracked out shell-like. But the uneven fracturing all over it, and it's quite easy to spot. Now the other thing you'll use is striations. Um, striations are the lines that run along your crystal faces with quartz. You can see they run across the face. You can see just those little lines running across the face here everywhere. Now topaz, the crystal, stri the striations on the crystal, sorry, they run up the crystal. You can see they're running lengthways up the up along the crystal. Now it's obviously easy when you get when you're getting blue topaz, uh, it becomes quite easy. You very rarely get blue quartz, and when you do, it's often an impurity like uh, an inclusion, like blue rutile or something like that. So telling between crystalline topaz and crystalline quartz is quite easy. It's when they get water-worn that it becomes a bit more tricky. Now you can see topaz wears quite smooth and clear, and that's due to its extra hardness. It's 8 on Mohs hardness scale, and quartz is only 7. And that doesn't sound like much difference, but in reality, they're a world apart. Topaz will squat, uh, scratch quartz very easily, and of course quartz just will not scratch topaz. So, but your best test for identifying gemstones is your specific gravity test. And they're quite easy to track down on YouTube. Just jump on there and type in your know, specific gravity test for gemstones and you'll get a hundred responses. But you can see, you can see how hackily quartz gets when it rolls down a creek. You've still got your, your fracturing, which, you know, happens as well, of course, even with your topaz, water-worn. It's still got that perfect basal cleavage across across there, and but you can see that just the difference. I mean, that's a clean, broken face, but when it's water worn, it's quite hackly on the outside. Um, now you've also, of course, got the old timers test, which is the cold test. Now topaz has got higher hydrothermal uh, capability, so it, it it's cold to the touch. It really is, um, and it's not so noticeable when you've just got a bit of topaz. But when you put a bit of topaz on one cheek and a bit of quartz on the other cheek, it's um, noticeable, very noticeable. I suggest you use your face cheeks as well. People might get weirded out otherwise. So, it, telling between the two is quite easy. Obviously, colour as well. But the main things you want to look at is your crystal system, your cleavage, the striations, hardness test, specific gravity test, and then colour as well. Nobody's going to miss a little bit of blue or a nice little blue crystal. So I hope this helps everyone out. And uh, any questions or whatever, fire away. Cheers, everyone. Happy Fossil again.